the majority of people, uh, children, our children, the only activities that they participate in are sports, you know, mm -hmm. basketball, football, the traditional mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. This gives them a different take, gives them an opportunity to get out of the city to run, scream, yell, mm -hmm. that type of thing, and yes. just kind of, you know, be comfortable. Good evening and welcome to Captions. I'm so glad that you joined us again and I promise you, I think you're gonna find tonight's show a very interesting and a very different program from those that we've had. As you can see, I have some special guests tonight and we're gonna be talking about something unusual for Urban P-Town Connection. We're gonna be talking about horseback riding. I have with me tonight individuals who are representing the River City Rough Riders. Welcome to Captions. Thank, Thank you. you. Sitting immediately to my left is Beulah Stanley. To her left is George Brown. And to his left is Barbara Lewis. Welcome to Captions again. Thank, Thank you, you again. I received a call about a month ago and uh, believe I had talked with George and George had talked with my cameraman and it indicated that he's been wanting to get on Captions as well as the J.T. Bourbon Street, and he's finally arrived, and we're going to talk about something that I hope that you'll find interesting as well as valuable. George, let me ask you, what, what is the River City Rough Riders? Is it an organization, a club, or what? What is it? Well, Andre, River City Rough Riders is a nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. and we're a community-based organization. Of course, the horses are not in the community, but mm -hmm. we do a lot of stuff in the community. Mm -hmm. We have property that we lease in Hannah City area, okay. and that's where the horses are kept. And you are located here in the Peoria area primarily? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Are all three of you uh, from Peoria? Were, if, were any of you born and raised here, or um, all of you? Or? None what? of us. <laughs> None of you. Okay, no. well, that, that's, that's good because... We're all implants. <laughs> well, but you're presenting at least what I think and what obviously you feel is something of value to our community, and uh, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. What is it that uh, your nonprofit organization focuses on? What What is your mission? What, what did, Do you have a, a mission statement or title? What is it you try to do? Our mission statement basically is reaching people on horseback. Reaching and people on horseback. Right. Okay. Basically what we try to do is we cater to a, a vast variety of people from preschools to seniors. We've done work with nursing homes, uh, preschools, daycare centers, uh, high school students, church groups, family reunions, neighborhood associations, those type of organizations. Mm -hmm. Bill, about how long has this organization been in existence? Mm, about 12 years. About 12 about years. About 12 years. <laughs> okay. And uh, whose idea was it to kind of form the Rough Riders in terms of working with young people as well as other people other than just generally horseback riding among the three of you. Are there other members that belong to the uh, association or organization? Yeah, all together there's probably about 12 of us with the volunteers. Uh -huh. um, Reverend Howard Johnson, uh, he's not here today. He's, mm -hmm. He couldn't make it today. Um, then there are a couple other young ladies, Chris and Tina. Okay. And then uh, we have a couple young men that are volunteers that work with us as well, mm -hmm. uh, Late Daniel and Corey. Okay. Those guys, have, Late Daniel is probably the newest member of the organization. He's probably been with us since this summer, late mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a young man who grew up in this community, who has ties in this community, uh, family uh, members, children, actually, who were actually at one of the sites that we did a occasion with earlier this fall. Mm -hmm. So we have a uh, high school student from Central that came out this year and volunteered with us and did some stuff with Myers Daycare Center and some of the other organizations that we have. Excellent. Well, the concept of the 
the organization itself is probably about 40 years old. Mm -hmm. I know your audience is uh, familiar with the late, great J.T. Goodfoot. Mm -hmm. He and I were sorority brothers, uh, and we started off through the Peoria Friendship House with Miss Caribel Brown and mm -hmm. Gerald Criswell back in the early 70s, and okay. we worked out of the Taft homes. We did basically the same thing, but we were a mobile unit at that time because having no horses here of our own, we actually had to take children to like Goodfield and Pekin to those riding facilities. Um, about three years ago, JT and I kind of had a conversation about, you know, trying to get some of the older group back together mm -hmm. and, you know, do what we considered, you know, another outing with some of the older guys and, and introduce some of the younger people to it as well. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we were unable to get together and, mm -hmm. and pull that off. So mm -hmm. this is, I guess, my due to him because it's something that we had, you know, spoke about doing and, you know, we were very adamant about trying to get it done. It just didn't materialize at, you know, at that time. Well, where did the whole concept of horseback riding come from? I mean, being a city boy myself, although I'm not from this city, mm -hmm. I mean, where did the concept of the, the horseback riding just in general come from? And then where did the idea of using horses in terms of reaching children or the older people in terms of what value you see in that? Well, basically... The three of us are from, from Arkansas. Barbara and I are okay. actually born in Mississippi, but as a freshman in high school, we moved to Arkansas. And uh -huh. we were able to move from the city, a city about the size of Peoria, mm -hmm. to a smaller town similar to Hannah City. Mm -hmm. We moved there, and we made some acquaintance there. The majority of those guys had horses, and they you know, were farm kids who grew up on farm, who were acquainted with animals and farm yeah. machinery. So... Being the city kids, you know, we got in and mixed it up with those guys. And, you know, I, my first experience, I believe, in working with horses or being around horses came when I was probably about six or seven years old okay. with my grandfather. Uh -huh. And he had a couple mules, and I kind of fell in love with him from there. Uh -huh. When the family actually migrated here in the early, I came in 70, and I think Bob and him came around 75 or 76. We had horses <coughs> down there. But... We listened to the stigma where, you know, you guys live in the city, you're not going to be able to have horses in Peoria. Uh -huh. That time we had about four or five horses, and we ended up selling those horses and moving here. And regretfully, we continued to go to, like, uh, Timberline and Goodfield and uh, Rock and Pee over and Peak and those type of facilities and, and take kids, you know. Mm -hmm. JT and I work with several uh, organizations from the Northside Action Council and the Taft Homes. One uh, particular organization was the Youth Service Bureau Program, and uh, Sally Murphy, I don't know if you remember yes, Sally remember Murphy. Sally. I uh -huh. work with them, and JT and I kind of merged together with the CYA, which is Concerned Young mm -hmm. Adults, out of the North Side with uh, the Project How and Youth Service Bureau Program. Yes. So we were able to do that grant, able to take children out to uh, Timberline and places like that to ride horses and, and just give them something different. You know, the majority of people, uh, children, our children, the only activities that they participate in are sports, you know, mm -hmm. basketball, football, the traditional mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. This gives them a different take, gives them an opportunity to get out of the city, to run, scream, yell, mm -hmm. that type of thing, and yes. just kind of, you know, be comfortable. Um, one thing that we found in working with the Knoxville Center, one of the people that we uh, teamed up with Miss Donna O'Day and her group, okay. there were several young people there that, you know, really got a blast out of it. Mm -hmm. And one of Bob's granddaughters was a member of the class, and she kind of introduced it to them. And from there, we got involved with them, partnered up with them, and it's been, you know, it's been a wonderful experience. Well, I think it's a great concept because uh, one of the dishes, disadvantages of living in the city is you're in the city, so you really aren't exposed to rural or country living or animals or raising crops or gardening and that type of thing. I know there's some organizations that work with kids as well as adults in mm -hmm. terms of gardening programs, but to uh, expose them to animals such as horses, I think is is a real benefit. 
I personally, and I'll just confess, I am afraid of horses. <laughs> and they are much bigger than I would have ever imagined them to be. I went horseback riding a number of years ago with my daughter. And the worst horse that they brought out for us to ride was the one I ended up with. Everybody else's horse kind of followed a trail and behaved. My horse decided it wanted to do its own thing and go into the woods and look like it tried to find every tree to scrape my leg on or limbs and so forth. But anyway, I enjoy horseback riding, but I told the Lord, if you get me off of it this time, I'll never have to make this prayer again of getting me back safely. But I'm so glad that uh, uh, the three of you, as well as the others, and JT, um, looked at horses as a way of reaching out to people, and particularly our youth. Uh, well, you know, I, Andre, it's, it's amazing, you know, just listening to you talk about your experience mm -hmm. with horses and most people especially city dwellers yes. have the same respect for horses they are fearful of them because they are so large but now horses come in different sizes you know mm -hmm. we don't have now but bob just obtained the little black and white pony she's about what six months old is she mm, about five months old right five now. months old okay. now so they you know in they're born about two or three hundred pounds and then mm -hmm. they gradually yeah. increase but there are miniature horses that you know, actually you're no higher than the table that we're sitting at. Okay. So they, they go from the miniatures all the way to the draft horses that mm -hmm. are, you know, two and two and a half, you know, mm -hmm. tons, that type mm -hmm. of deal. But a horse is a very unique animal, a lot similar to a dog, a very large dog. Okay. Um, <clears throat> they can, animals, the same God that made us made them. Mm -hmm. So in them is the ability to either like or dislike you according to your personality and the way that you treat them. Yeah. A lot of times what happens is that when people, for their first time on horseback riding, in the seat, the saddle we call the seat, when you're in the seat, they can sense that you're nervous. Yeah, and when, I, I was told that. Well, <laughs> when you're nervous, it makes them nervous because okay. the horse is a herd animal. Okay. So when you're in the vicinity of the herd with them, you become the alpha or the leader of the herd, so they mm -hmm. trust you. So if your nerves are upset, it makes them upset as well. So they feed from your reaction, and they can sense your nervousness, mm -hmm. nervousness through the seat. So what we do a lot of time is we do a deal, especially with the younger people, what we call pony on lead. Mm -hmm. And we also do it with adults too. We've had uh, children as young as a year old and probably some babies mm -hmm. that we've actually held mm -hmm. and rode mm -hmm. them around, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, within a confined space. So I think we did a deal with friendship and we had a couple of mothers from friendship mm -hmm. that were in their 80s. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the age limit really varies. Yes. But the thing that we do is that we try and introduce to them to something that's different. We yes. give them a chance to go into a different atmosphere to experience something. And some of our kids have never had the ability to be around horses or that's right. and naturally you know you bring a small child in and here's a horse that's standing 15 <laughs> or 16 hands high and they're looking up they're yes. petrified mm -hmm. but once they touch the horse and they actually see how soft they are and how gentle they are they tend to warm up a little bit and then mm -hmm. the nervousness and that type of thing it just seems to resolve I can recall when I first started back with this adventure uh, I think it was like uh, maybe 89 or 90, the first horse that we bought, TJ, uh, when he got to be about a year old, I was boarding in Glassford at that time. Mm -hmm. And I had a young man that was about 6'2", about maybe 250, 280, somewhere in that mm -hmm. neighborhood. This young man was so big until, and he was only like 14 or 15 years old. And he came around the horse and he was petrified. When he stuck his hand out to touch the horse, you could just see his hand trembling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So eventually, you know, I gave him carrots and he watched me feed the horse and he eventually touched the horse. And after that, every day I got off from work, he was sitting on my porch for about a month waiting for me to come home so he could ride with me. 